French surgeons found out that because of that lateral eye center of rotation, we have a higher moment arm, higher mechanical failure. And when Dr. Frankel started to do these surgeries, he found that his base plates had a significant failure rate, reported 12 to 13% over two years, which is not unexpected because of what the French surgeon showed originally. To his credit, he said, well, if I give you more fixation, I might be able to solve this. So by adding peripheral 5.0 locking screws and changing the biomechanical forces by giving a little inferior tilt and taking shear forces to, to compression forces, I might be able to improve the longevity of these implants, the survivorship. And to his credit, that was the case. So adding peripheral locking screws reduces the micromotion enough where the bone can ingrow into the back of the glenosphere or base plate and provide long-term survivorship. In addition, if you, if you look at the shoulder, so the natural shoulder is a ball and socket, and if I reverse it, if I put the, the ball superiorly tilted, you can see that this compression force changes to a shear force, and that can lead to failure. If I put it into inferior tilt, you can see that the ball will be compressed as the socket is engaged, meaning that shear forces are turned to compression. Biomechanical studies have shown that doing a little bit of interfere tilt, at least neutral, can help our biomechanical profile. And adding the locking screws reduces our motion, micromotion, potentially allow for long-term glenosphere survivorship in a lateralized design. And if you incorporate these additional factors, uh, you actually find that the survivorship, and he's published this is about two years, is 0% per him at two-year follow-up. So with improved biomechanics, namely fixation and placement, we could potentially lateralize our gland sphere and then start to get back some of the things that we've lost with the medialized implant, namely active external rotation. In the long-term follow-up for the Grammont style systems, the active external rotation improves zero to one degree. So there is a big difference. And I, and I personally have seen that in my own clinical practice where the lateralized uh, designs are more predictable in getting your active external rotation back. And that's important again, because people in order to feed themselves, if you look at yourself, you, you, you externally rotate to get to your nose or your mouth or your face. If you don't have the active external rotation, you do this and that's not socially acceptable in certain uh, situations. It looks a little funny. People are very self-conscious about it. You can do this, but it's not natural. And you need to get the external rotation to clean the back of your head as well. So getting active external rotation is a very important thing for me and my patients in trying to improve their outcome, which is why I find that I've become a much more of a fan of the lateralized system in order to help them get that function. In addition, the complaints of suits not fitting right, bra straps not working or falling off uh, has dropped significantly almost to none. I used to routinely talk about these things and counsel my patients preoperatively, but ever since I've switched, I really haven't talked about these, those things, thankfully. In summary, we've talked about the lateralized reverse shoulder replacement, why that may be advantageous compared to a medialized system, and we're going to talk in the next chapter on how to get that better from a surgical perspective.